Hello everyone, just Gorn here, and welcome back to another episode of Film the Bakes Verge Season 2. Uh, and today we are going to be looking at the completed Black Rhino area that we started in the last episode. And I am joined by Wyatt. Hello! Yeah, this is this... Um, my first time in the Beaks of Bergen, which is very yes. exciting. Yes, I only had even as a guest up to this point uh, for an episode which I tried to record several times and I just was like, nope, I need someone to, to help me get through this. And to, this mm. episode was actually nothing different. I tried to record it last night mm. and I was not happy with it. So I was like, I yeah. just need someone to bounce to bounce commentary off of. I've come, yeah, so, I've come to understand that that's honestly the best way to go about things is to have a second pair of eyes with you. Yeah, just to... To look at the things that you like, for me, it's like I've seen this a million times, so I might be yeah. like, yeah, "Look, this is the sign. Let's keep yeah. going." <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you, need a, you, need a, you need a newbie who's enthused. <laughs> yeah, I mean, good thing you don't watch my videos, so you actually <laughs> <my> <laughs> shut shut up. <laughs> It's like it's like homework. I need I, I I need I need like I need like time to do it. And I only I only listen to music when playing planet when playing planet. Oh so. right, okay, yeah. No, I watch All everyone's right. videos and watch Dungeons and Dragons podcasts. So <laughs> very cool. But yeah. So here we are entering the the Black Rhino area, uh, and of course, uh, in the last video, I I've kind of forgot slash uh, didn't have time to put in all the reference photos so we are going to be looking at all the things we did last episode as well and this time you'll be able to see the references in the bottom right and uh, so yeah that's why we're having a quick peek at these signs uh, but we'll just keep going for now um, going past uh, this little bridge which used to be the entrance of the car safari um, but now it's been kind of uh, converted into just a walking path and I take uh, it that's what the little like wooden beams yeah on, like, the it used to be are. like a it used to be a very bumpy bridge, <laughs> mm. which was always a great start to the car. Yeah. So I don't know if it was always meant to be that bumpy, uh -huh. uh, or if it was just like worn out after years <laughs> of usage. Um, but I always thought it was a lot of fun. It really put mm. you in that like oh we're going <laughs> off yeah. trail in this, in this dangerous area kind of mood. But yeah, so Hi, lions. Hi lions, bye lions. <laughs> this is kind of the first um, major, like my favorite, one of my favorite views over here. Mm. Um, back in the back, we can actually see the habitat, but it's hidden. The fences to it are hidden. And we just have this beautiful vista. Um, yeah, I just love it. I love it. <laughs> um, definitely putting those wildflowers to good use. Yeah, they are a very nice addition. Yeah, this area... Like I, I've been working on this area for months at this point, so mm -hmm. it's really evolved. Like I think like two updates have come out while working yeah. on it, so it's like, oh well, I got these flowers now. I should probably <laughs> put them to use. So, it's always yeah. the bane of my existence is like getting <laughs> getting so creative with like pieces, and then a DLC comes out. And it's like, oh, is that what you wanted? We we yeah. can we can we can give that to you like literally. Yeah, it's like I, I think, no, wait, let I me think... be let me be creative. <laughs> Yeah, I think for this area as well, like this is a little poacher um, village uh -huh. where uh, I had made some custom gutters and then we got the new gutters in the conservation pack and I was like, well, okay, I can throw those out now. <laughs> These are way better than anything I could have made. So Yeah. Yeah, it always just goes that way. But yeah, uh, over here, we, yeah, as I just said, we have a little poacher village with a bunch of education about poaching, the effects of it. Also about the black mambas, which are... Uh, a group of, uh, I think they're all female uh, anti-poaching unit hmm. uh, in Africa that are protecting several nature reserves, which is just really, really cool. That's um, neat, yeah. And yeah, if we go in here, this is like the, the workshop of a poacher. And if you go inside here, you can listen to a conf concert. Co God damn it, not again. <laughs> Conversation. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> between a poacher and its uh, its boss mm. uh, and they talk the boss is like very demanding and like oh I want a rhino horn right now and you're gonna yeah. give it to me uh, but the poachers are like no you're not paying me enough my family is sick and I can't feed them uh, and it kind of paints this new image of poachers where mm -hmm. it's like they're not necessarily the bad guys they're just yeah. poor people trying to get by um, whereas there's this whole chain of command of people who want a rhino horn to give to their superior and like uh -huh. they 
don't pay the poachers enough and it's it's a whole thing yeah it's it's a much more complex issue than just we need to stop poaching for and sure there's a lot more to it so yeah so yeah that that's what this area is all about and uh, at the end of the conversation um, the, con the, conserva <laughs> the conservation conversation? <laughs> I hate it. I made this pun for Farmer Shadi for the elephant poo poo paper, and ever since uh, it's just been mixed up in my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I want to point out before we move on you do oh, yeah, these right. like, um, themed interior spaces really well, and it's it's always this sort of um, kind of ramshackle, like field research base or like hut kind of aesthetic. It's yeah. really specific, and you do it really well. Maybe it's just because it's what you have to recreate, but still, you, you do it very well, very nicely. I just realized, speaking of things from the con... con, con yeah, now, you, got now you got this. Conservation pack. Conservation pack. <laughs> we got that new lamp, I just realized, and I think it would be perfect for this thing. I should I should update Maybe. that. Uh, anyway. I, I like I like how short your, your version is with the bulb and stuff. Oh. Yeah. True. I'll, I'll see if it fits or not. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, at the end, the end of the conservation... No, conversation. God damn it, it's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I am completely lost. Mm. Um, the, the, the boss escapes in the jeep and you can hear him crash and then the door opens. As you come outside, you can see the crashed car and there's like a mister inside that makes the smoke effect. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's really fun. It's a really nice <laughs> bit of storytelling. That's but, awesome. Yeah. So, let's keep the game paused because the frame rate is so bad in here. <laughs> the part but, uh, is, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, after that you uh, come into the actual Black Rhino area and we get to the first habitat. So there's this education pillar with a lot of information about uh, Rhino conversation. Mm. No, concert. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be the title it's of the just... video. <laughs> A, con a conservation conversation. Yeah, but we need to have a conversation about me saying conservation instead of conversation. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's about um, what do zoos do to help rhinos, what is being done in the wild by like the black mamas and such, mm -hmm. uh, and why is it important uh, because <sighs> the number of rhinos are dropping like worldwide. So freaking cool, the science. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, yeah, and then uh, what we're actually here for this episode is I finally did the actual habitats themselves. So over here we can sit down on the bench and uh, enjoy the view of the rhino along the river. Beautiful. And, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how these turned out. Somewhere along the, the building of this, like I was using the crowberry bushes mm -hmm. uh, and then I was like, I feel like I, there's something better here. I, I honestly hadn't played the game in a while. Yeah, and then I saw Leaf post something about periwinkle on pronation. I was like, "Right, oh, <laughs> periwinkle!" That. I was spamming those everywhere. I should do yeah. that. <laughs> do that more. Yeah. So that's 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 well, that's what I did. As we'll, as you can see, everywhere mm -hmm. uh, we have the periwinkle, and especially over here, we have this huge savanna habitat. Which uh, the animals in the savanna habitat are all grazers. So they eat anything that they want. Uh, yeah. So there barely is any foliage here. So you're using the periwinkle to get these very short stumps of grass like Definitely. things. It's just a beautiful way to get some detail in here. And then combine and I also that really with, love um, yeah. two things. The um, use of the tropical rocks to make it look like, not necessarily like a cliff, but sort of a ledge of sort of yeah. hardened dirt. And then also your use of the... Um, strangler fig roots on um, towards the left yeah for like the tree i don't yeah, I, don't, I don't see people use those too often i think they are a little jagged but you've pulled it off really nicely yeah and it's also the color of them are uh -huh. sometimes difficult but they actually the ash tree and i think the oak trees as well mm -hmm. uh, they they blend in very nicely so cool those are some trees that they work really well with in my yeah. opinion yeah, and they also just work as like little branches on the ground, like over there. I think I got another one Definitely. Uh, along the side. And over here is, as well in the kind of banks of this moat, um, I feel like a lot of animals are standing on the side over here, so the, the, the edge of it kind of crumbles. Mm -hmm. And I tried to replicate that using the faux tree branches over here. That's awesome. And I think it works decently well. It's not perfect, but 
it works. The, the, the struggle with the um, the faux tree pieces is that the color changes really dramatically based on what, where the light is hitting them. Yeah. It's so like they're they're a lot darker in shadow, but they, in sunlight it's a lot more seamless. But either way, it looks great. Yeah, I'm really happy with, uh, with how it turned out. Yeah, and the rest of the habitat is still a little bit empty. Uh, I think it's mostly going to stay this way, but we'll see if we can do a little more to it in the mm. future episode uh, as we'll tackle the car safari. And yeah. then lest I, we forget the uh, the carrots. <laughs> oh yeah, oh right, of course. We got the little carrots around. Yeah, I think this, surprisingly this is one of the intended purposes for them uh, as mm. like the conservation pack. Yes, I did it right. <laughs> um, started off with uh, like a carrot planted in the ground like this. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it gave me the impression like, oh, well, okay. Like I thought they added a new plant, but it was just yeah. a carrot. So, um, oh, of course. Why are they? Oh, right. Of course. I was like, why are they lying down in the feeder? Oh, maybe because I put a bedding in there too. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that's on me. Uh, yeah, but what, what's really nice about... Um, this area there used to be like a uh, an elevated walkway going through this habitat mm -hmm. which they flattened out uh, and now you've got just this huge like one of the longest sidelines um of any zoo basically it's just yeah you got several hundred meters of just space to look through mm -hmm. the savannah and it gives such a cool like safari feeling to be honest for sure for sure and yeah as we turn around we got another view of that same rhino habitat. Oh, he's still standing in the same spot. I didn't expect that. Um, and yeah, this is just expertly done by the actual zoo. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just the way that the moat is hidden over here is just perfect. Yeah, uh, really fooled that fooled that one lady. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when I was here at the zoo, uh, like on the on not the International Red Panda Day it was slightly before that. Yeah, there was a lady who was like. But is that is that thin little wire really gonna hold the rhino? <laughs> and, and yeah, she she did not notice that there's actually a whole moat in here. Maybe she noticed a little bit later on because some of the viewing areas don't hide uh -huh. it as well. But yeah, over here it just works perfectly. So yeah, just really happy with how that turned out. Um, and then as we turn the corner, <laughs> we uh, get to some more densely forested area and uh, we have this awesome little view into the yeah, other rhino yard of, speaking of like vast natural vistas yeah <laughs> and then is that a rhino is that a rhino there behind oh, the tree yeah and you can actually see the african wild dogs in the yes. background as well oh that's so good it's so good yeah it actually works just like it does in real life i'm really happy with how this ended up it's so picturesque with the um the atmospheric perspective um, with the um, the Scots Pines in the background, they're a lot sort of lower contrast. It's all very mm -hmm. sort of painterly almost. It's beautifully composed. Yeah, yeah, and I especially like the fact that there's less trees in the back of this habitat, yeah. uh, which makes the kind of grasses in the... Please, please move towards the middle. Please move towards yeah, the middle. please, please, please. <laughs> but yeah, the way that the grasses are like all in the sun, it's just yeah. really, really nice. It's beautiful. Um, and, and then also that's the, actually... The, yeah. The moth, the moss on the tree, done by some guy. <laughs> <laughs> it was my idea, and then Eben also said it, and now I have oh. to mention that it was Eben's idea, or else he's going to oh, complain about it. <laughs> I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. I'm awaiting to see what he comes now. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have both of our asses. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, what's really cool about this habitat is that it's it's a very nice example yeah. of the difference between a black rhino habitat and a white rhino habitat because these are mm. both black rhino habitats yeah. and i wonder do you know how you would be able to easily tell that this is clearly a black rhino habitat is it the um trees not necessarily is it the mud not necessarily <laughs> that's all i've got <laughs> <laughs> there's one other thing in here <laughs> the rocks no, it's just the grass. Oh, the grass. Yeah. Um, you may or may not know, uh, white rhinos, uh, they have very wide lips. It's actually mm -hmm. not the white rhino, it's the wide rhino. Oh. Um, it's it's like a translation error almost. Oh, really? Um, yeah, really. Um, That's crazy, I never knew that. And it's because they eat grass. 
So the white rhino, they eat grass, whereas the black mm. rhino, they have this pointy lip, mm -hmm. uh, which they use to eat like twigs and branches. Okay, so, that, that I did know, that they have a different like browsing style, but... Yeah, so and that's why you can tell the difference between their habitats, because the white rhino would eat all of these grasses, and it would uh -huh. just be a... And it would be as empty as the habitat on the other side over here. <laughs> yeah. Whereas uh, a black rhino, you would see a lot more of these grasses. That's crazy. They might I'll trample to... them, but they no. won't eat them as much. So. Yeah. I'll have to um, keep that in mind because I have a white rhino habitat in Orwells that's very densely foliated. So I'll have to go back and change that. Yeah. I mean, you can like section off areas to keep a bit... Mm -hmm. there's, there's, you can find ways to still keep some greenery in there because it is nice aesthetic wise yeah definitely but it usually ends up just being a sand pit at some yeah. point <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um moving on to the last habitat we already saw them a little bit from the black rhino but this over here is just my favorite habitat now it's uh, so that I've done. cool i love the um sort of face-to-face -face viewing opportunity you get yeah it's actually amazing just how cool it is that they are up higher than you mm -hmm. and as a result yeah you, you were really eye to eye with them and i've had a, a, a number of close encounters here with them where they got all the way up to the glass and it's just it is so much fun it's so amazing awesome. i'm particularly um, glad that uh, freebuild was up and working again mm -hmm. by the time i got to this because i think in the last episode i actually mentioned how like i only was able to do one burrow and stuff, but yeah. Uh, now I was actually just like free built lets you just put down as many as you want, mm -hmm. uh, which I think you also did with the little blues in Saint Reginald. Yeah, I took advantage of that with the penguin habitats. Yeah, and I mean they're just such a nice aesthetic. Like, even though these animals can't use them, which mm -hmm. is a shame. Yeah, they um, but just the, the depth effects of for sure these holes is just the way it, the way it just becomes like a void. It's awesome. It's so cool. So yeah, that's just, and then yeah, of course, integrated with like tropical rocks, faux tree branches mm -hmm. and all of the roots, uh, mostly Scots, like the broken Scots pine yeah. has just this really nice root structure to use. Um, but I also used some of the like smallest birch twig. Uh -huh. that also kind of looks like a root. Um, yeah. And then a variety of grasses like the Yorkshire grass mm -hmm. on top. Um, I used this little um, spiny mat rush, yeah, spine, spiny headed mat rush yeah. to get these like thinner clumps of grass, which I noticed were mm -hmm. around a lot. And there's also a dry version of that, which is always nice to use for yeah. like the more dead areas. Um, I noticed especially around this these birch trees over here was like a little dried out area that had a lot of dry grass so uh -huh. it's just nice bits of detail for stuff like that very cool yeah and what we'll see in the next episode and we also saw it from that side but it works the other way around as well mm -hmm. um it's next episode we're going to be working on the car safari over here mm -hmm. and and you'll see that they've created this immersion effect with the black rhino habitat yeah. so sometimes you'll be lucky and actually see the black rhino as if it were standing inside of the african wild dogs enclosure yeah which is just super cool at the point where the um the, the grass in the foreground habitat is like no longer obscured by shadow the um the transition between the two is absolutely seamless which is amazing yeah super cool so yeah that is pretty much it uh, for the African wild dogs, like I got a lot of lower grass over here using like eel grass and those spiny headed things. Mm -hmm. um, just because the long grass is a little too long uh, for an area like this, but it's so cool and oh, they cool. come around here so often. It's I so love how fun. I love how they're just sort of crawling all around the the burrow. It, it's it's a really satisfying payoff, even if they don't use it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I put some. Uh, bedding on top so that they mm -hmm. sleep on top of it yeah um and there's like an enrichment item over here which i think is bugging them out a little bit because they're constantly just standing on top of it nodding uh -huh. uh, so i'm not sure what's up with that i might just mm. have to remove it <laughs> um, but yeah super happy here and yeah and then we have another one of those educational pillars just like with the rhinos and it's it's a similar theme it's like incredible uh, conservation in the wild um, 
conservation in zoos, which is all about breeding programs. You can mm-hmm. see the EEP logo. Yep. This is the logo for breeding programs. Um, and then this is for kids. Like they, they also do that over here. You've got like information on top for adults and a mm-hmm. fun little interactive thing at the bottom for kids. Yeah, it's, this is so it's that, like that, that, that like yeah that style of education board is very inspiring for me to like do more research on the animals I build for because it it gives me a lot of inspiration as to what sort of like interactive displays I could create because this is based yeah. on like um, social structure. Exactly, this is like which uh, role in a pack of African wild dogs could you fill? So yes. like, do you do the groceries and you're a hunter? If you babysit kids very often, then you're a babysitter. Uh, mm-hmm. If you're a kid, then you're a puppy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and there's also like, I think there's one for like being the alpha. Uh, but yeah, I think I was a hunter because <laughs> I don't babysit and I do mm-hmm. groceries <laughs> and I don't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then here's a, a fun little information sign just about um, Something that a lot of the, the uh, educators of the zoo notice is that people often mix up the African wild dog and the hyena. Yep. So they made a whole sign about the differences between the two. That um, um, happens at the Los Angeles Zoo too. I, whenever I'm there, there's almost always a kid who calls them hyenas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, before Planet Zoo came out, um, I also didn't know they were different. I thought mm-hmm. there were two hyena habitats next to each other. Uh at the zoo, but uh, yeah. no, uh, I soon yeah. learned because um, Afri- uh, no, because Planet Zoo had African wild dogs. Mm. I was like, oh, what is this animal? Oh, they're that's a different thing. <laughs> right, oh, these okay. things that I've seen my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are different after all. Yeah, I'm I'm am ashamed I'm ashamed to admit, but yeah, I was one of the, the idiots. <laughs> one of the fools. <laughs> so yeah, uh, let's cross this little or no, cross cross under this little bridge um, real quick and we'll get to the final viewing point for this episode which it's not a very different from where we left it off in the last episode mm-hmm. but we do have the uh, panorama viewing point I think it's called mm. uh, internally because uh, this sign is called the panorama sign Yeah, um, and you've got this beautiful panorama view of the big savannah habitat and yeah over here it's it's again a little barren this was one of the only spots where i could actually find some some plants uh-huh. uh, in my reference photos so i made sure to add those mm. but yeah it's just like it's a shame that people stand on this edge a lot because it trampled all the plants yeah. so otherwise it would have had that same kind of immersion habitat uh, mm. habitat immersion effect it still works really well, but slightly yeah. less. That's like an interesting um, note because um, it's you could definitely sort of apply that kind of logic in design in Planet Zoo. And like in terms of landscaping, you could be like, oh yeah, this area was so exciting to people that they kind of just stomped it. Because I, I, I do that with animals a lot in like, like mm-hmm. high contact areas, like door openings. I try to reduce yeah. the plant life just because they trample it so much, but I tend not to think of it in like a guest perspective but. yeah no guests do it a lot as well if you have yeah. a path that uh that curves like over here mm-hmm. uh, this this is a bad example but say that this wasn't here yeah say this was not part of the walking route naturally um and the walking route was this curve mm-hmm. people would walk here anyway and it would get yeah. trampled so you wouldn't have any foliage there so yeah that's just something that happens with people and i don't know why they didn't put a rope around this to prevent Mm. it from happening because the the grass simply never got uh, an opportunity to settle in Uh so um yeah it was a bit of a shame but maybe it was intended i don't know i I wouldn't think it was because going up here ruins the entire effect because you can immediately see the fence i was was gonna say that's what the that's what the shame is yeah so i don't know it's uh it's a mystery Mm. yeah and we have of course a really cool sign that really, we saw last really, episode already. Really cool. <laughs> Super happy with how that came out. But yeah, that's it for this area. So uh, this was all here last time, I think. Mm-hmm. So we are going to exit out real quick and briefly go over here where we're going to be working the next episode. 
And the bus stop is already pretty much finished, because I finished that at the end of the last season. Mm -hmm. um, but we are going to be working on the entrance of the car safari. So, over here, coming in season two, the car bus <laughs> safari. But yeah, we're going to get started on that finally. So, I already moved Exciting. the big tusks. Oh, um, right. <laughs> yeah, because that's where the yeah. entrance used to be. That's where the entrance used to be. But yeah, no walking from this point onwards. Uh, we are going to drive, so <laughs> looking forward to that. Um, it's going to be sure. a lot of fun to build, I think. So, yeah, going to get started over here. So, I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Uh, probably going to take a while because I don't have that much time to build on it. And it's almost my turn for St. Reginald as well. So, um, yeah, we'll see how that all ends up going. Um, but I hope you look forward to it. We're probably going to do some more streams in the Beekselbergen as well. Um, because I finally finished sorting all those damn pictures again. Uh, so um, I've got a couple of things I want to do that are like just small little projects that we can do on streams. Um, as well as the sign streams that still need to happen because we have loads of sign to make. And also the car safari has its own signs. So uh, I should probably get started on those as well. Ain't no, ain't no rest for the wicked. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> at least the car safari signs are a lot bigger. So yeah. They should take less time because they're less finicky, but I don't mm. know. Knowing me, I'll just go into twice the amount of detail because you'll I have find, twice the amount of space. You'll find a way. <laughs> I'll find a way to spend hours on one side. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Wyatt, thank you for joining me. Of course. And uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.